Disclaimer, I didn't write a script for this video, so I'm just kind of talking. So, sorry about that. Oh, hey. Didn't see you there. Welcome to another closet uh, booth build, I guess. Just in the way. There we go. All right, cool. Hi everyone, I just got a new apartment and I am here building another sound booth. Um, I was hoping that I'd be working with a whisper room this time around or something similar. Uh, it did not end up being the case. I live on a second floor apartment, I don't have the means to build it myself, yada yada yada. And this closet is just big enough for me to justify doing this again. So, um, what we're going to be doing here, um, and hopefully one video, and I'll just kind of flip forward a few days as I build this thing as pieces come in, but uh, we're going to be building an improved version of the closet booth that uh, was already up on my channel. Now, it's going to be a little better for a couple reasons. Number one, um, obvious, is a little more space. Not incredibly much, but uh, we're at least, the area that I'm standing in, we're looking at a little more than two feet wide, um, and we're about the same uh, about the same depth of four and a half feet. Yeah, like four and a half feet. Um, and how we're going to be doing this, uh, I apologize, by the way, I'm looking over here to look at your beautiful faces, but the microphone's here, so I'm kind of doing one of these. Anyways, second reason, uh, instead of a, a moving blanket hanging uh, in the open space where there's untreated room behind it, I now have doors, solid, beautiful doors, and I'm going to uh, line the inside with the same acoustic foam that I used uh, at my last uh, my last booth. Uh, which brings me to my third point, why this is going to be an improved product. Product, excuse me. Um, instead of using one inch foam all around, uh, we're gonna take advantage of the bit of extra space we have here, and we're going to use, um, or we're going to get some Owens Corning 703, I think I'm saying that right, so 703 or 307, I'll have it in the description. Um, but it's the same stuff that Booth Junkie, along with a lot of other people that build their own sound booths, use. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna use that to cover up the short end of the closet. So these walls, the side walls, um, and the roof. So that'll be a good improvement. Hopefully, that makes a noticeable sound quality difference. And um, I'm sure everything combined, this booth will sound a lot better. Uh, the last one did leave some things to be desired. It was the best of a bad situation, but um, hopefully it gets that beautiful studio-esque sound that we desire. Hey there. Uh, just giving a better look at the uh, thinner walls, the, the more narrow walls, rather. And uh, this is just under two feet, um, and the Owens Corning is two feet exactly wide. So we're going to be able to do, um, if you've seen any Booth Junkies videos, you know that I absolutely am taking some inspiration here. Um, but we're just going to be fitting them in, um, just squeezing them a little bit, and the tension, or the friction rather, between the wall will uh, hopefully hold that in place. And if not, I'll be sliding a little bit of fabric in the crevices as well to cover up the insulation so I'm not breathing it in all the time. My head is not in the shot. Yeah. So luckily enough, the very next day, the Owens Corning came in from Amazon. Now what I did is I bought a six-pack of the two-inch thick two by four panels. It ran me about $120. If this is out of your price range, feel free to drop down to the one inch thick. Obviously the thicker the panels are, the more effective it's going to be, but if you need to cut corners for cost, this might be a place to do it. Now, like I mentioned before, we're not using anything adhesive to keep these panels up on the walls. All we're doing is pressing them into a space where they're going to be able to hold themselves up via the friction with the wall. So since the panels are two feet wide and the space I'm working with is just under two feet wide, I can just kind of shimmy these panels into place and they'll stay by themselves. As far as stacking them on top of each other, I did have to cut a couple panels just to make them fit perfectly, and that wasn't a problem at all. I'm pretty sure I could have just used a butter knife if I wanted to. The ceiling was just a little more tricky because the space was a little wider, so the panels didn't stay in by themselves. What I did in this case is I took some plastic bags and stuffed them between the panel and the sidewall until there was enough friction for the panels to stay up by themselves. And obviously this can be anything that you can really stuff into those crevices, whether it be bags, newspaper, cloth, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to affect your sound in any meaningful way. 
Once all the panels were in place, it was time to put the canvas sheet in, and this part was a little more tricky. All we're doing is tucking the canvas between the wall and the panels. And in doing so, we're covering up the panels completely so that the fiberglass and other particles aren't falling out into our eyes, lungs, or anything like that. After what was probably 30 minutes of struggling with this canvas sheet, I finally got the panels covered up, and this portion was done. So, day one is done, and the Owens Corning is in place around the outsides of the closet. I don't know if there's a noticeable difference right now, especially with the door open. Probably not, would be my guess. Um, but that took me uh, maybe an hour and a half or so. It's not big, not too bad, not too bad. Um, only had to cut one piece and was able to use that uh, the piece that I cut off to fill in another gap that existed. Um, so... This stuff is super easy to cut, super easy to work with. Just make sure you use protection. Um, if I wasn't wearing gloves, I'm sure my hands would be absolutely red and, and irritated right now. Uh, the eye protection caught a lot of pieces of fiberglass uh, that probably would have fallen in my eyes. Just protect yourself. Um, very important. Uh, the hardest part was probably pushing in the cloth on the sides just because the pressure was already so tight um, from the... Uh, the insulation being pressed between the walls, but that's about it. Um, pretty easily uh, installed. Um, and the other thing I want to touch upon that I didn't mention yesterday when I recorded was that I am trying to make this just like the last one, where it's uh, easy as possible to take down without leaving a mark, especially since I mentioned this is a new apartment that I'm renting. Um, this isn't mine, so I can't exactly you know drill holes into the wall or or do anything that's going to leave... Uh, a mark permanently um, to lose that sweet security deposit. But um, we have installation, uh, excuse me, we have insulation installed covering most of the walls, I'd say right now, um, with zero uh, adhesion or drills or nails or anything um, just by placing them between the walls. That's awesome. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to close this door and see how we sound. Okay, so here's what I sound like in my new booth with just the Owens Corning covering the thinner walls. It was without padding on the bigger surfaces and with the door still ajar a little bit because I, I haven't fixed it to close all the way. So here's where we're at. This is a day one progress check, and I guess I will see you tomorrow. Hopefully the tiles come in. With perfect timing, once again, the next day the tiles showed up. And if you haven't bought these foam tiles before, you might not know that they come packaged pretty flat. They're almost never going to have the correct shape right out of the box, so you're gonna to have to do a little bit of extra work or waiting to fix that. The first method is just to unwrap them, let them sit for a day or so, and they will puff out and retain their normal size on their own. The other way, if you're a little more impatient like me, you can take the ones that are super flattened and just soak them with water like a sponge and they will puff up to their normal size right away. The only problem is that now you have to let them dry. If they're just a little soaked, obviously, you can just put them off to the side. They'll dry on their own. Otherwise, you can throw them in the dryer. I highly recommend running them on low heat for about five minutes at a time. Now that the tiles are all set, we're going to start laying out these strips of duct tape on the wall. Now, I talk about it a little more in my last booth video, but the basic structure is going to be that these long strips of duct tape are going to be facing sticky side away from the wall with individual pieces at the top and bottom sticking to the wall, holding them in place. That way there are a lot less sticky parts actually touching the wall, so when it comes time to break it down, you have a lot less work to do. Next, slap some Elmer's glue on these strips and start stacking tiles. This takes a little while, I like to do increments of 10 minutes at a time, just because if you're stacking these tiles and one of them near the bottom falls off, it could be really tricky to get it back in place without disrupting the ones around it and it just gets messy real quick. So place rows at a time if you can. Give it time to dry for the most part. It doesn't have to be completely dry. Just know that it's going to stay in place before starting the next row. And with that, all the tiles are placed. Okay, so here's where we're at right now. We've got the Owens Corning 
covering uh, the thinner walls. So side, side, roof, all covered in Owens Corning and the canvas sheet. And then probably like 90% of everything else aside from this door is completely covered in these acoustic foam tiles. Uh, we got little strips of wall showing here and there, uh, mainly along the sides where the Owens Corning was kind of uneven. So you're, you're just going to get some, uh, some wall being shown. This little strip right here where the shelf is jutting out, nothing I could do about that. Uh, and then I ran out of foam, so the top of this door, which by the way doesn't open in case any of you were wondering why it was always closed, um, somebody painted it shut, but that's fine. Uh, we won't need to open it for anything. We're basically pretending it's a wall. But I ran out of foam, so there's probably a good four or five inches at the top of this door, which is just exposed wall. Uh, but not bad, not bad at all. Uh, like I mentioned, this door is going to go untreated, and that's fine because it's the only space in here that doesn't have treatment on it. And the reason that's fine is you get the most reverb when you have two uh, surfaces parallel to each other so that the sound can bounce between them without any resistance. Like you can hear, I'm sure, from the big room out here that is completely untreated, and it's just a ton of space where the, the sound is just bouncing around the walls. Uh... What's not going to happen when I close this door uh, is bouncing like that because everything else is treated in the room. It's not needed is what I'm trying to say. I'm out of foam and it's not needed. <laughs> so let's go ahead and close this door and see what sound we're working with right now. Here we go. Okay. Close about as much as it's going to close. Okay, this is the sound that we're working with right now. To my ears, it sounds pretty good. Um, again, it's not over deadened, which is good. Uh, there's a little bit of bounce to it still. Um, that, that's not really a big issue you have to worry about. That's mainly once you get into a professional setting and you don't want to over deaden the room. But for a home studio, there, you usually can't overdo it. Um, you're never going to hear it, it being too deadened. So that's really not a huge factor, but worth mentioning, I guess. Anyways, it sounds pretty good. The only thing you might hear is if I talk really loud or give a shout, or something, then you're going to hear some bouncing around outside. Because, of course, these doors are not going to be completely soundproof. Some spillage is going to come through. It's going to leak out and in. So what we're going to do is we're going to give just a little bit of treatment to the room outside, whether that be towels, blankets, clothes, uh, bedding, whatever we really can. We're going to hang on the walls, um, nothing crazy. It's not going to be a recordable space out there, too. But we're just going to kill some of the bouncing around that we're hearing from outside. And that should finish up the uh, the sound quality that we're looking for here. So let's let's go ahead and do that. So once again, we don't have to make the outside room recordable. It's not going to need that level of detail and treatment. So we're going to fill the outside area with quick fixes and budget solutions, just to stop excessive echo from bouncing around. What I did was buy these mattress covers for queen-in full-size beds, cut some holes in them, and just hang them up with command strips. They don't look pretty, but they get the job done. And that will cover the larger surface area. Now for the corners, instead of base traps, I just got some more command strips and hung some towels. And really just fill up the room with anything you can. I ended up moving my futon in here just to take up more space, but really everything you can stuff into a room like this is going to help. And with that, we're done. The room outside no longer has excessive echo, the inside of the closet is treated, and what you're hearing right now is the sound quality of the booth. I think it sounds pretty good. It'll get the job done, and it costs way less than getting a whisper room. Now, I'll go ahead and leave you with a quick rundown of the price. Owns Corning, about 120 on Amazon. Tiles, about 40 on Amazon. Command strips, towels, mattress covers, all combined, probably in the range of 50 to $55. Add in the duct tape and glue, round that up to 60. And altogether, minus any equipment that I'm using, the sound that you're hearing right now was created with, we'll call it 225 About $50 more expensive than the last one I built. Unless, of course, my landlord doesn't appreciate any duct tape marks in the closet, in which case I can throw my security deposit in there too. I'll see you next time.